and welcome to this week's episode of the Amber Tree Wellness TV, your weekly dose of health and well-being. How are you going today? What I'd like to talk to you about today is gluten, and in particular, wheat gluten. So what is gluten? Gluten is a protein that's actually found within some grains. Um, in particular, wheat, it's also found in spelt, it's found in rye, it's found in kumut, which is also known as kuroshan, and a few other grains like that. It's actually what gives the bread the, the fluffiness and the bounciness. Gluten is what actually makes um, breads and cakes and everything kind of springy. That's what gluten is. But gluten is very hard for us to digest. Why should we be avoiding gluten? Because that's a lot of the talk that's around at the moment, and I recommend for most people they actually do cut down, particularly on their wheat gluten, and actually eliminate wheat gluten from their diet. And if they want to have some of the other types of gluten, um, so long as their bodies can tolerate it. And why is this? Well, research has found that one in four people are actually sensitive to wheat gluten, but I actually would think that the numbers are actually higher than that now. I'm seeing a lot more of it in clinic. Um, and, you know, I know that you may say to me, well, you know, I ate bread when I was growing up, so why can't my kids do it? My, you know, I don't have a problem. There is an issue, and that is they've changed the way wheat is grown. In the 70s, they went from having really tall um, wheat crops, and you may remember the movies in the past where they had wheat crops taller than the man as they're walking through the wheat. That wheat doesn't look anything like that anymore. It's actually short and fat. It's only about two foot high, and it's called a high yield. Um, wheat, high yield grain. And this was introduced into the 70s. And all of our wheat now comes from high yield grain. And it's so much higher in gluten than what the old style of um, wheat was. And this is why we're having a problem. We're getting so much more gluten. And our bodies are just not made to digest that much gluten. Also, if you look at processed foods, there is gluten included in so many different things. Go and read some labels. You'll find that gluten's in things like chocolate. It's in tomato sauce. It's in things that you wouldn't expect to have it in there. And that's because it's a cheap thickener. So we are being bombarded with gluten in all of our food. We're getting so much of it and our bodies can't cope. And then it starts to cause symptoms as in bloating, gives diarrhea, it can give constipation, it can affect our behaviour, it can affect our sleep, it, it affects our moods. It has such a big impact. It affects our immune system. So I recommend for people that they actually remove wheat out of their diet for a, a period of time just to see how they actually feel without it. So how do you do that? You know, I, you know it's the big question is, well, can't I eat any bread anymore? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. Um, no, you can't have wheat if you want to remove wheat gluten from your diet. You can't have normal commercial breads. But having some of the lower gluten um, breads, unless you have a real issue with gluten, as in celiac disease, some of the lower gluten breads are generally okay. And that's the things like kumuts and the spelts. They're fine, but not too much of it. You won't be having it every day. And when you look at your pastas, you know, remove your pastas and replace them with things like quinoa, which is a fantastic seed. It's not a grain. It has no gluten. You know, buckwheat also, even though the name, it's not a grain, it's not a wheat, it's actually a seed. So there's other ways that you can actually use, um, get flours and um, these type of foods into your diet. Use bee sand, which is a chickpea flour. Things aren't going to be big and springy and all of that. Coconut flour is another fantastic one. But you can still do a lot of your cooking with it and a lot of your baking. So... I'm going to put a challenge out that you can actually go try going without some gluten for at least two weeks. See how you feel. See if you notice the difference. Come back and let me know. Or if you're already taking gluten out of your diet, make some comments below and let me know how you feel when you don't have gluten and what happens when you put gluten back into your diet. Please feel free to share this video with other people. I really would love as many people as possible to actually learn how they can live happy and healthy lives by eating the right type of foods. So until next week, I'll see you then. Bye.